The peace and quiet of the Capitol grounds is exceeded only by the peace and quiet of both houses of the legislature. Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes said this morning that the session could run 30 days, and it could well if action tends to go on the way it has this morning. Both houses met, but nobody did anything, and it wasn't until this afternoon that committees began meeting, the Senate Finance Committee and the House Committees on Appropriation and on Insurance. The Senate Committee immediately set to work revising Senator A.M. Aiken's bill to give Governor Smith power to transfer funds. Legal minds in the Senate have said parts of that bill probably aren't constitutional. Meanwhile, the House Insurance Committee is doing nothing but marking time while members negotiate with senators on whether and how they will hold joint hearings on the insurance legislation. Officials hope both houses and all the committees will get to work tomorrow. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move in Austin. Mr. Maddox, do you uh, feel that the government uh, showed cause to, uh, to bring your clients to trial on this charge? Well, I'm, by the Code of Ethics of the Bar Association, I'm not permitted to talk to you about the, uh, the facts of the case and actually what the government has established in the case. And I would say, uh, only other than that, I would say that I have some reservations. Well, basically, the uh, respondents to the questionnaire favored uh, reform or modification of the minimum foundation program, which we now have in Texas, which is a matching state and federal program. Basically, uh, the state uh, is to furnish 80 percent of the uh, cost and the local districts 20 percent of what's called M&O, maintenance and operation, as distinguished from capital cost, the building, the cost of building the physical plants. Most people favored a continuation of that program with some modifications. It has to remind you of something from a monster movie, this which was once a lagoon used as part of the sewage treatment process in South Dallas. About a year and a half ago, it was abandoned and allowed to dry up. Officials here tell me solids were left after the drying process. On September the 12th, smoke was seen pouring from the hundreds of cracks in this solid block lagoon. After hurried consultations, it was decided to flood this 20-acre area to put out the smelly smolder. Pumps and lines have been put out and the treated effluent from the plant pumped in. It's not, however, as simple as it sounds. Nobody really knows just how deep this lagoon of solids really is. They estimate about six feet. Secondly, that stuff down there is not stable. If you were to step off into what looks hard, it really isn't, and you might sink. Nobody knows how deep.
And I think this is stupid. I think that the commissioner's court are quite capable of making their own choice. Do you think that adding five more members to a 40-man board is a good idea, or would you recommend that you replace five of those who are there? Well, frankly, I think the 40-member board is simply just uh, uh, ridiculous. They're not going to be able to do anything. I think it's uh, simply a method in which you can uh, bring in a lot of people. You can give them plaques and say, you've done this and you've done that. I think that 11 to 15-member board would be a heck of a lot better and more operative. Dwayne Thomas Avery is an exceptional athlete. He trains constantly, and he's always in condition. Uh, now, he'll step in physically and play. Uh, now, mentally is another thing. When he takes on a new system, it'll take him a little while to get used to the system, but physically, I would never worry about playing him the first day he shows up because he's in that kind of condition. Philadelphia had a little bit of success passing against Dallas. Was this because of exceptional receivers or maybe a breakdown in your secondary? Well, a lack of alertness to somewhat. We did not play as good a game in the secondary as we normally do, and uh, we were just relaxing some, uh, just like uh, when uh, uh, that Jackson caught the ball down the middle on a scramble. Well, uh, Cliff Harris just relaxed, you know, and let him get behind him. Well, this happened to us two or three times, and when you do it, do it at 60-yard clips, you know, it doesn't take long to look bad, and that's what happened to us. Could you give us an idea of what New York will offer Sunday? Uh, most team, uh, most people uh, downgrade this New York team. This is a much better New York football team than most people think. I think the coaching job did this summer was excellent on the Giants to turn over people. Uh, we expect the same look almost at ourselves with the multiple sets on offense. They use the motion series, the multiple con uh, multiple for formation philosophy, which will really mess you up mentally if you're not careful. This will be the big test for us. Uh, defensively, they're basically a change-up team, like most everybody is today. Under shifts, over shifts, and changing pass defenses every play. Uh, it's going to be our ability to key the passing game, which will determine, really, the outcome of the ball game. But they're a very explosive club, excellent football players in Johnson uh, and several of their receivers. Alvin, uh, did you think you'd have such a good game opening opening the season like you did? Well, I was striving to have a good game. I didn't know it was going to be that outstanding, but uh, I was surprised the way the game turned out to be, and uh, I was really happy. Looking ahead to Florida, what type of a defense do you think they will use against uh, the M&M combination? Well, I, I really couldn't say. I know they'd probably be protecting the outside, and uh, knowing that we ran a lot, they hadn't seen too much of our passing offense, and I imagine when we start passing, that kind of changed the defense around. At the front of the year, Coach Fry said he would definitely pass to run, but with such fine success, don't you think he'll continue to uh, run and then pass? I really couldn't say, but I hope he runs more than pass. <laughs> Which was your most satisfying run Saturday night against the Deacons? Oh, I think all 22 of them are pretty good. I like them all. Have you improved any as a runner? We talked about it as before the season began. Could you tell uh, this is a different Alvin Maxson from last year? I think I'm running a little uh, harder and picking my holes a little better, but so far as running, I think it's still about the same. The gonorrhea rate is going to increase 25% in the Dallas-Fort Worth area next year. But these state and federal health officials here at the conference aren't distressed. They're pleased because the bigger the rate of reported gonorrhea cases, the more treatment and cures. More and more gonorrhea victims are being located because of a new nationwide screening program launched in June. I asked Dr. Don Milar if the cases of female gonorrhea are more difficult to locate. Well, unfortunately, 80% of the females who are infected don't know it. 
until they may wake up in the middle of the night some night with a very serious complication, have to be rushed to the hospital, be operated on, and have all their female organs taken out just to save their lives. Of course, these women tragically are sterile for the rest of their lives after that. Is there a new program in the United States now to control gonorrhea, to locate it in females? Yes, as a result of some new techniques, we can now identify females by routine pelvic culture. Texas Health Department officials hope that these kind of VD symposiums will educate doctors, educators, and pharmacists in the role they can play in locating gonorrhea victims. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move. See, that's probably our most uh, creative and important contribution to the history of museums. Uh, we have about six ways lights, light comes into the building, natural light that is, so that a visitor to the building looking at the works of art will always see them under the changing conditions that nature provides. For example, as we stand here now, the cloud or the haze outside is beginning to go away from the face of the sun a little bit and the light on this Buddhist sculpture from the 2nd or 3rd century AD in India begins to rise, that changes your mood and changes the aspect under which the object is shown. Now, of course, this is a two-dimensional piece taken off a building. This particular trip to Central America was an extraordinary success. Uh, it is a new era, literally a new era for the Dallas Symphony. It has put this orchestra on the map, and now it has to be considered as one of the great orchestras in the world. The response from the audiences were extraordinary, uh, and these are very learned people who have heard classical music all their lives. We've never, uh, this orchestra doesn't know what that kind of response can do, and then it was amazing. The orchestra was superb uh, under many, many different difficult obstacles, as we all know. The major, you know, and most important issue involved is, is the people's right to petition the government. That's a constitutional right. So that's the whole basis for local option elections. The other major aspect of it is the fact that the Article 16 of the Constitution of the State of Texas provides for local option elections for citizens. Now this is all constitutionally provided legal procedures that people have a right to to decide whether they want to be a wet or a dry area. I believe the election would be the first step toward bringing liquor stores and beer joints into our area, and I'm opposed to bringing those joints into our area, and therefore I'm opposed to the first step. Today marked the Senate Committee's first meeting. It took only 15 minutes for senators to decide they would hear testimony on any kind of insurance, including no fault. This isn't exactly the way Governor Smith issued the call for this special session, but no committeeman seemed too concerned. Former Insurance Commissioner Larry Teaver, whose appointment was rejected by the Senate this summer, was called to explain the bill, and he was immediately cross-examined by Senator Oscar Mazzi, a co-sponsor of the legislation. Mazzi wants to expand the proposed law to place a limit on how much insurance companies can charge.
what is your background and qualifications for that position? Well, I have uh, administration, office administration, and uh, I have uh, experience in the Army, and I got a master. You have a master's degree? Yeah. What In what field? Education. Education. Uh, what is the, the duty, as you see it, your duty? I understand basically it'll be administrative, is that correct? Right. right. Do you see any problems? Do you foresee any problems as uh, director of the project? No, I don't foresee any problems. Well, there is the legal process of condemnation, which all of us would not like. We would feel that this would be somewhat of a failure on the part of the rail ownership and ourselves to realize that we have to work together. children's lives. For instance, one channel of this thing will... I've read quotes where you were really uh, tickled to death with your first college game and, and surprised that you got to play so much, right, Wayne? Really, I was because, you know, for a freshman, it's kind of, you know, it's just unreal, you know, for you to be able to play as much as I did, you know, and rush for 100 yards, you know, and I, I didn't think of, you know, I would do something like that, you know, and it was just, you know, something else. Did playing before the home folks uh, help you, do you think? If anything, it made me a little bit more nervous than I would if I was if I had went to Florida this year, last week or something, you know. Well, what's your reaction to your first game of college ball? Is there how much difference between the South Oak Cliff uh, opponent and the Southwest Conference opponent in the defensive area? They hit a lot harder. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> well, you're going to continue to run through people as you do. Uh, this won't affect you, do you think? I'm going to try to change a little bit and run around a little bit more than run through them. And your mother doesn't like you to jump so much, is this correct? No, she really doesn't. She gets kind of nervous when I be jumping, you know. But then, too, you know, uh, that's what it takes to get that extra yard or two, and that's what I want to do. I didn't get the opportunity to see you play much in high school. Was that 50-yard run indicative of what you did uh, throughout your high school career? No, it was a little bit different, because I got real tired running at 50 yards, and I usually didn't get that tired during high school. My main assignment Saturday will be to return kickoffs and punts, and I'll be playing right halfback. Mainly, I like to uh, play right halfback because I feel I have 
more what you call East and West movement, you know. But um, kickoffs, I like to return kickoffs mainly because the guys on the specialty teams really, if you look at it hard enough, to give a lot of effort. And punts, if I can break one, that's what I'll be trying to do. Do you have a little deal going with uh, Morris over at SMU? Well, not really. Wayne and I are good friends, but I'm just going to go out and try to play the best I can, you know. And if I feel that I play the best I can, I believe I come out on top. What about opening game jitters? Uh, are you experiencing any of that? Yeah, I've been going, I've been going through it all week. Uh, my stomach's been a little upset, you know. That's natural for a freshman going to first watch the game, but uh, I believe I work out just fine. Well, opening ball game, uh, you know, you're always afraid about those illegal motion penalties, fumbles, uh, maybe a bobble a snap from center on fourth down, this type of thing on punting situations. I think those uh, early season ball games, people seem to have the jitters, and uh, it's always nice to get it behind you, especially if you can come out with a win. But I'm just nervous about playing any opponent at any time, really. Of course, you've got a building team this year. How do you assess them now as you go into your opening game? It's hard to assess uh, our football team because we've been playing against ourselves for so long. We, uh, time you take in spring practice and then this long preseason fall practice, all this comparison has been made against ourselves. And, and, and really, at this stage, I'm kind of confused. I'm anxious for outside competition to actually see how we do stack up. I really don't know. I honestly don't. I don't have an opinion. I'm looking forward to the contest, yet at the same time I'm nervous about how our team's going to play. Have you gotten to the point yet where you've got quarterback confidence? I've always had confidence in Alan Lowry. I'm an Alan Lowry man. Uh, I would have confidence in him if, uh, if he were going to run a clothing store or an insurance company or work in a bank or play quarterback or play defensive halfback. I just have confidence in him as a person. And um, I think Alan will do okay. People think of adult education as basic training for those who cannot read or write. The definition is true, they're a little limited. Here at the Old Crozier Technical in Dallas High School, now called the Adult Learning Center, there are as many reasons for adult education as there are people. Take, for instance, Mrs. Martha Wynn. She's a 32-year-old divorcee with four children. She has 15 years office experience as a bookkeeper and types 75 words per minute. Mrs. Wynn is in adult education because she cannot get a good job making enough money to support herself and her children. The reason? She does not have a high school diploma. They have told me that I, that is the only thing that is stopping me. That's the only thing that stops me with civil service. The first requirement, and it's listed in the paper, is to have a high school diploma. They won't even test you for a job, regardless of the experience you have, unless you have a high school diploma. Jesse Hudson is a 59-year-old barber. He's what you may call a self-made man. Mr. Hudson has owned his own barber shop and has put a daughter through college. Mr. Hudson says he makes a good living and doesn't need a high school diploma. He's where he wants to be. Mr. Hudson is in high school for the satisfaction of being able to hang his diploma in a prominent place in his home. I'm just going because I want a high school education and the self-satisfaction and I enjoy learning. Mrs. Wynn and Mr. Hudson are only two of the 500 students presently enrolled here. Throughout the Dallas School District, some 4,000 adults are involved in basic adult and vocational education. Fees for instruction are small, however, some of the courses are offered free. Improvement in economic and employment opportunities, and maybe, most importantly, self-esteem. For Child Aid News on the Move, this is June Gray. Well, within 10 years' time, it, it, it should make inroads in it, and I forecast that there'll be uh, only the best of the stations will survive. There'll be less television stations on the air than there are today. How are the people going to benefit by this particular uh, CATV They're gonna, approach? They will benefit in three ways. They will live a richer, more fuller, and or, or, or an easier life, because so much they'll have access to so many more things that they do not have access to now.
I've been invited to Red Channel and uh, two times, several years ago. Why didn't you go? Uh, well, we were not allowed to go. Our uh -huh. government. Our government. If you had an opportunity to go now, would you? Oh, yes. They have a, a wonderful conservatory there and um, some very fine musicians, so I understand that. Committee, Senators Mozzie, Harris, and Kennard. Nobody from this area is on the House Committee. Testimony there from Insurance Board member Derwood Manford will try to show that the Texas system is among the best. Manford's figures show that we pay among the lowest rates in the nation. Committeemen can therefore look forward to long hours of trying to untangle this mass of rates, payments, and schedules before they'll have a solid proposal. That includes scheduled testimony next week from the Insurance Commissioner of California. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move, in the committee hearing room, Austin. Sale of his television station and hanging on to his CATV interests, which basically surprised a lot of people, I think, uh, was based, predicated upon this inside information. It didn't possibly. surprise me. Uh, I know lots of broadcasts that they had the choice, and who owned CATV, if given the choice, would sell their broadcast station and uh, hang on to CATV because it is the way of the future.